Rivian has paused its electric van deal with Mercedes in a shocking turn of events. So where exactly is the stock headed? Stay focused as we answer that by going through recent news as well as my chart analysis and price prediction. But before we do that, subscribe to our channel Stocks 101 for regular stock market updates. Rivian had signed a deal with Mercedes-Benz to produce electric vans in Europe, but CEO RJ Skerin stated on Monday that the company is backing off from this deal. He said that the company will always work for the best returns on their investments, and at present their consumer business needs more attention than their current commercial business. This news does not cancel out the possibility of another deal with Mercedes in the future. With all that in mind, let's analyze the charts. So as you guys can see right over now in the one day chart for Rivian as always we'll first analyze the one day chart then the one hour chart and to edit off we'll get the five minute chart but right off the bat we can see that we're up 1.8% on the pre-market to a price of $26.07. Now we can see that we did fall down pretty badly yesterday right we went from a price of pretty much $26.75 to $25.61 falling by 6.16%. This of course was you know, we've already discussed the reason in the past, in the previous part of this video, that the Mercedes deal got cancelled, or apparently it got called off by Rivian's side, right? So that, you know, it kind of confuses me that why would Rivian go through that deal in the first place, you know, if they wanted to just cancel it in the long term, right? At the same time, people might look at it like this way that, hey, you know, um, RJ Scarring is confident that he can continue to run his company and make it a success and you know kind of dominate in the market without the help of a big brand name such as Mercedes. Now at the same time if we look at the price action we can see that the Mercedes deal was announced I guess somewhere around here right in September. So we can see that the stock hit a high over there around $40 right and ever since then we've fallen by what I believe is about 33%. Yep. Um, 35% actually and we can see that we did get a slight recovery from the well the worst low that we made over here right this was at a point of pretty much the $20 range so will we hit that range again in my opinion probably you know we will hit that but we should recover from it right now why are we up in the pre-market if the Mercedes deal being called off was such a bad thing of course two reasons first up I already discussed that one that you know, some people might be thinking that RJ Scaring is so confident in his company because he knows that something's up. He knows that, you know, Rivian might be um, qualified enough or such a good company that it can achieve good numbers on its own without the help of a big, you know, big brand name such as Mercedes. Or the other reason, well, we're just up as a breather and then we're going to fall back. The second point kind of makes more sense to me because, of course, such a big deal kind of being called off will not set well with retail investors those who are like completely i would say they're fans of rivian basically right those people would definitely accept accept this with open arms but at the same time the normal investor who has just looked at news and they were like hey the, you know this company is partnering with mercedes we should buy it right those people probably will sell now the real question is that will the price go up or down at the current price action, you know, it suggests that the price is going down. So we can see that the price right now, of course, is in a negative trend. So I believe that it would probably continue for some time, right? Our upper resistance stands around pretty much the $30 range, which is psychological as well. And if we talk about the support, of course, we have a support around 24.5, right? That is probably our next strongest support. And after that, well, we will probably fall down around the $20 range, but get supported there because we have one of the strongest support levels there, right? I do not think the stock has fallen to those levels before this, right? But, well, who knows where it might go, right? You should always do your own research. I'm no one to comment on that. But in my opinion, I don't think that we'll fall below these levels again or make another low, right? Sure, we might continue this bearish trend for some time and then... Going into 2023, I believe that a lot of EV companies will start to recover. And that is basically my analysis for the one-day chart. So we'll move on into the one-hour chart so we can analyze some more details. And now that we're in the one-hour chart, we can see that the bearish trend is a bit more evident over here, right? We can see that we did get a strong sell-off starting pretty much this date, 1st December. 
you know, the entire market kind of fell around the first week of December, right? Even AMC and some other big stocks, right? They fell down. And at the same time, we can see that despite its fall, right, we did hold pretty well for the first two or three days. But on 5th December, we got a major fall going down by about pretty much 8.5%. But at the same time, we can see that we've kind of maintained this pattern of getting a breather, then getting a sharp fall, breather, sharp fall. So I believe that today's session might actually be a breather, right? So to continue this pattern, we'll probably start going up a bit. And then we might end this day off in what I believe would be the 26.5 to the $27 range. So this would be my target for the day. I do believe that we might end this day in the greens, probably going up by 2 or 3% more, you know, above this pre-market price. So that would put us at 26.5 or, you know, between that range that I told you. Wait, I'll mark that as well. $27. 26.5 dollars so this is the range that i believe we're going to end the day in now if we talk about some support levels and some important levels in case that we break 25.5 well we won't be reaching 27 because of course we will use pretty much you know most of our time that we have today in breaking this resistance if we make it a resistance right it's a support right now if we go down it's flipped it's a resistance now and that would be difficult to break but of course, if we want to see what exactly is going on in the market, we'll have to jump on into the most detailed chart, which is the 5-minute chart. And now that we're in the 5-minute chart, we can see that on the aftermarket, we haven't gotten any, you know, major movements. But we did kind of fall down from our pre-market high of 26.27 to 26.07 or 26.09, which is the current level. We can see that on yesterday's aftermarket, we got a pretty sideways trend, which was, of course, neutral, but the current trend on the pre-market kind of indicates um, kind of a sell-off in the first few hours. And after that, you know, as I already told you, we might get a breather towards the end of the day. So I'm assuming, or I'm at least expecting in that sense, that we'll probably get strong buying volumes after 1 p.m. Right, so around here, we should start getting high volumes and by the time we end the day, we should probably be in the range of $26.57. Now, if we were to look at yesterday's performance, we can see that over here, we did get a strong selling volume, right? But at the same time, I have to show you guys this perfect ladder that we made. This is a perfect ladder bearish trend. This indicates, you know, that it kind of just verifies that the trend is completely real and not fake, right? Whenever you see something like this, whether it's on the lower side or on you know, or on the upper side, it's just an indication that a lot of intraday trading is going on. And at the same time, it's a valid trend and not a fake trend. If we talk about candlestick patterns, we can see that we did get a double bottom engulfing candle over here, right? We got a double, or rather a double top, I'm sorry for that. 26.7 double top, right? Then we got an engulfing, followed by a red candle, right? Green candle which was smaller than this one. But of course, the next red was smaller than that as well. We got another red right here is when the show got interesting, right? We did get a pin bar on the lower side over here, right? So this pin bar kind of indicated that the stock is going to fall for sure. So it further confirmed this bearish trend that was already set. And you could have gotten a good short trade over here. You know, if you were to short the stock over here around 26.25 even with a stop loss at 26.5, so a 1% stop loss and a 2% target, right? Wait, let me get this. So, well, we, you know, would have we completed it? 25.75, yep, we would have completed it over here. So going from 26 point, somewhere around here, right? 26.25, all the way to 25.75, right around that range. So that was a good trade. And at the same time, we can see that we did get some indicators of the trend being ended over here i'll quickly point them out first up of course we did hit a support zone over here right at the same time we stopped making a larger moves right we can see that we did get a higher low right over here we did get a higher high somewhat over here right so we kind of reversed the pattern we did close the day off in a good sideways market and if we look at the current price well, it's not moving on the pre-market, right? We're still up at $26.09, up 1.87%. 
With that, my prediction remains the same that I believe we might get a sideways market after a bearish trend and then we'll end the day off on a bullish note. With that, what is my price prediction? Well, I personally think that Rivian, even though it might be a good stock, is already at a decent value, right? So I won't say something crazy like a 10x return, but definitely in my books, the stock can go up to $40 in the next year, right? Again, that's just my own analysis and I could be wrong. So remember that this most definitely is not financial advice and you should always do your own research before you trade. If however you enjoyed my analysis, be sure to hit the like button. If you did not enjoy it, be sure to hit the dislike button. You can subscribe to our channel Stocks 101 for more such videos. And as always, I will see you guys in the next one.